Hello, you beautiful individuals. Well, today, doing something a little different, kind of. It is a reaction, but bear with me. It's not one where I'm going to be a complete and utter prick, because it's actually about something I truly love, history. This is by the channel Salmonella Academy, um, a channel I've liked for actually a really long time, but I, I, I guess he just kind of stopped making videos. Like, I don't know what... You know, I you know I don't know. It's been quite a while since I watched him. It was like about five years or so ago. I think it was this video actually that introduced me to him about five years ago. This is historical misconceptions for you to bring up during family dinner. <laughs> um, so really, I'm doing this. I was actually going to reply, do a reaction, reply, make fun of a spirit science video. You know, nice little shout out to Sir Sick and his never-ending quest into looking at insane people like spirit and science mind you i don't you know as i've said before i truly don't care what you believe as long as you're not utterly denying in more importantly putting misinformation out there about science uh spirit science though man like if you want to believe that concept okay but he takes it way too far but anyway, as I was trying to reply to that, my brain actually shut down because of all the ignorance. So I decided to take a little cleanser, take a break from that. And we're going to look at this quick little video. It's, uh, it's only about five minutes long. It's, it's a cool one. I love history. Um, there is a great channel you should really check out called Vlogging Through History. He's the one that actually, I guess, kind of inspired me to do this because... Through him, I refound, I should say, or like was reintroduced to Sam Onella Academy. It has just been it been you know a couple of years since I've watched any of his stuff, and and then I looked, and it's actually like the last time he released anything was about two years ago, so that's probably why. Um, but yeah, so check out Sam Onella Academy. Check out vlogging through history. Definitely check out Sir Sick. He is phenomenal, super funny. Uh, this guy though, this guy is also hilarious i mean absolutely kills me there is cussing in this so if you don't like foul language for whatever reason yeah don't watch it i guess but it's not it's not that bad like get over it um but yeah let's uh let's just get into it this episode of salmonella academy is brought to you by skillshare <laughs> Okay, I'm not going to keep stopping it so quickly, but I just, I love his intro. <laughs> hey, kid. Yeah, you. I just got off the phone with the big man upstairs. And he told me that I need to clear a few things up around here. So without further ado, here's ten pieces of malarkey that you might still be spreading. Number one, <laughs> nobody was ever burned to death at the Salem witch trials. Of the accused. That's, yeah. Um, so, you know, some people were. Not only that, I don't know if he says it in here or if I've seen it in another video, but I, I think it was in one of Vlogging Through History's videos that there was a gentleman who was accused but wouldn't plead guilty or not guilty and then was essentially crushed to death by just having a crap ton of rocks stacked on top of him. And he just kept saying, more weight, more weight. He wouldn't say innocent or guilty. And apparently back then... If you didn't, if you pled no contest or, you know, not saying innocent or guilty, um, guilty or not guilty, whatever, they couldn't actually, like, hang you, I guess? Something like that? Because if you said innocent, they could easily find you guilty, and obviously if you said guilty, you were guilty. Um, but yeah, so anyway. Fifteen died in prison, nineteen were hanged, and one was squished to death. Uh, that last yeah. one is way more interesting than any cremation, by the way. Dude was a badass. His name was Giles Corey. He was 81 years old and so done with the town of Salem's garbage that he wouldn't even dignify the trial with the plea. So the town stuck him between two boards and stacked rocks on top of him in an effort to draw out a confession. But every time they tried to get something out of him, all he would say was, More weight. This went on for three solid days until he finally died, never giving any indication as to whether or not he was a witch. One can only wonder. Number two, the OG Buddha wasn't the obese guy. Uh, real quick, before we go into the Buddha thing, like, let's just talk about that. I mean, I understand people are kind of whatever. They suck. 
But dear Lord, what a weird time it would have been to live in where anything you did, basically, that somebody didn't like could get you essentially murdered for being a witch. It's just wild to me. I don't know. Ah, uh, yes, this one about Buddha. Guy, That's Budai, a Chinese folk character meant to represent Maitreya, a.k.a. future Buddha. Now this shirt is double sad. Number three, <laughs> Buddha wasn't a god either. He was just a guy named Gautama. Now this shirt is triple sad. Number. F he was not only just a guy, he was... I mean, he was just like... His ideas weren't that, like, mystical or crazy either. Like, he didn't, he didn't focus that much on, like, the godly aspects of things. It was more just be a decent person, you know, not be a piece of crap. I don't know. So that's the thing. Like, most religions, even though to call that a religion is kind of tough. But anyway, most religions, they all have that same premise of just don't be a piece of crap. But then, for some reason, end up being a piece of crap themselves through their religion. It's, I don't know, it's wild to me. Religion's so bizarre. That's why I do enjoy going after it. But, you know, as I've said before, believe what you want. I truly don't, I, I will never, like, you believing in religion is cool. There's nothing wrong with that. Like I said, it's just when you deny science and start spreading misinformation and, like, the world's only 6,000 years old. That's when I get angry. Anyway. Four. Ever heard of a vomitorium? Turns out, no. It's not a place where Roman nobles would go to make room for more pheasant yeah. spleen and lobster eyelids. It's just a big entranceway to the coliseums that hordes of peasants would spew out of. Number five. And if you've ever been to, like, a sporting event of any kind, like a proper one, you know, NFL game, NBA, a big soccer game, whatever, uh, you, you've been, like, you've been in something like that it doesn't have to just have one entrance or exit if you have that horde of people if you're watching from an outside perspective it kind of looks like that you know coliseum or that stadium or building or whatever is vomiting out people which is hence the name washington never cut down a cherry tree in his youth i don't get this one at all apparently it's supposed to paint <laughs> the man in a good light somehow it's like tyler what the hell happened while we were gone where's the tree in the front yard oh yeah that was me got bored just felt like vandalizing something, you know? <laughs> hey, what about my honest character? Number six, the pyramids weren't actually built I, by I slaves. This, These workers were respected members of society. They ate meat and worked in three-month shifts, and even got to be buried right next to the tomb after their death. Matter of fact, that's more than we can save for the people working on man's greatest achievements today. If I spent years of my life helping to build the space station, you're damn right I'd want the Salmonella Memorial Corpse Receptacle floating <laughs> along right next to it. That would be amazing. Number s So, I, I kind of get where that misconception comes from, because they did have slaves. It's just, building of the pyramids, I mean, these pyramids were not just tombs to them. Like, they weren't just this triangle building, <laughs> you know, it was... They're, these were very important structures to, and we don't even fully comprehend, you know, obviously what they thought of them and used them for. Like, we have a fairly decent idea, but, you know, it's history. It's hard to know for sure about anything. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, that's, that's, that's a cool one. I, I, I like that one. Seven, the Great Wall of China is not the only man-made object visible from space. No, it's not, and this one annoys me. Because it's, it's not even visible from space. Like, if you don't have some kind of zoom-in camera or telescope, whatever, you can't see the Great Wall of China. It's just a line. Even if you can somehow see the line that it is, you can't tell the difference between that and a river and whatever else. No, you want to know man-made objects visible from space without any assistance to the naked eye? Every single city on the planet. Literally. Every single one. Like, not only big enough one, you probably could relatively see the different color, but at night, you see those lights. Like, it's, that's the most visible thing from space, man-made-wise, I should say. Um, but yeah, anyway. I don't know where you dipshits got this one from. <laughs> First of all, there's no way you could see it with the unaided eye. The wall is like 30 meters thick at most, right. while the distance to outer space is generally recognized to be 100 kilometers up, known as the Karman line. To give some perspective, that's like me holding up a standard-sized guitar pick from across the entire length of a football field and asking you what color it is. Also, there are plenty of man-made objects that are way bigger in terms of local surface area than the Great Wall, so even if it Home was Depot visible, there's no way 
Pompeii would be the only one. Yeah, Number see, eight. And that's the thing. Even like the things he put up there, the pyramids, uh, maybe those. Uh, the Pentagon and like the parking lots. You know, you couldn't see individual things from space without w- with the unaided eye, as he said. Uh, pyramids, maybe, but I still doubt it because the coloring and stuff, it would just blend in. But like I said, you can see cities 100%, and especially when they're lit up and when they're not. So there's your man-made objects you can see from space. Stop saying the Great Wall of China. Say cities. Hey, you might have heard this one before. You know, Hitler was a jerk and all, but hey, he made the Autobahn, so at least he was efficient. Actually, Hitler didn't create the Autobahn. It was already there. He <laughs> just helped expand it into newer territory. In a similar vein, Mussolini didn't make the trains run on time. With most of Italy's infrastructure repairs happening before his rise to power in 1922, and even then, they weren't nearly as punctual as he'd like you to believe. So unfortunately, you're gonna have to find something else to like about these fascists. Like Hitler's <laughs> elegant way of speaking. Or the way Mussolini says spaghetti. Paschetti! Number nine. So, it's interesting. Like, that seems to happen a lot. Not just with, you know, crazy dictator peoples. A lot of leaders, they seem to get the credit and the blame for things just because like either the project was finished or viewed as you know if not complete operable by the time they come along it's it's it happens in modern day too i mean i'm trying to think of a good example uh okay so like look as i've said before i'm not a republican or a democrat i was not a fan of trump but i'm in no way a fan of biden either um so, but the thing is, when Biden came into office, he was kind of getting dogged for, you know, the economy and COVID and stuff like that. But that he came into it. He didn't, you know, he didn't, whatever. He didn't, he wasn't in the beginning of it. And on the same premise, he was kind of getting so much credit for the stimulus thing that I think one came out when he was president like right in the beginning and you can't like i'm not saying you can't give him credit but you know plenty there was more stimulus packages that came out under trump at least for individual people you know so yeah i don't know Uh, like i said i'm not i don't like either one i don't like i honestly haven't had a president that i've truly liked like at least in my lifetime uh you know I, i like i said before i enjoyed the way obama spoke but beyond that i didn't, you know, wasn't necessarily, I guess, a fan. I just like listening to him. Um, I would say probably favorite president of all time. Hmm, that's a tough one. I would say if Garfield, James Garfield, would have, who, by the way, a lovely misconception. Um, actually, he might bring it up in this. I'm not gonna say it, just in case he doesn't. If he doesn't, I'll say it at the end. Uh, so James Garfield, if he wouldn't have got shot and then you know, inevitably dying because of his idiot doctors, he probably would be my favorite president just because he probably would have been the greatest president America's ever had, quite frankly. And that's not like, you know, that's in no way a Democrat or Republican thing. I'm pretty sure he was a Democrat, but most, a fair amount, like most, I would say, historians are under that same premise that James Garfield would have been a phenomenal president if he would have gotten to actually be president for longer than a few months. He, uh, I mean, he was unbelievably intelligent. He was very progressive for the time. And yeah, I mean, he would have, he probably would have been a solid president. Other than that, I mean, I would say it's a good tie between. I know it's kind of cliche, but between Washington and probably Washington and Jefferson, actually, which Jefferson's a little controversial there because he's, I mean, both of them did some messed up things, of course, but as far as presidents go, I mean, they were, they were pretty badass and they definitely, uh, you know, they had founded the country and all, uh, I guess more modern I enjoyed Reagan. I, I mean, I, I wasn't alive when he was president, but I, I do enjoy it. I've always enjoyed listening to him speak. Bill Clinton was always a funny one to listen to speak. I've always, I did enjoy, I enjoy that. Was I alive for him? 
when did he stop being president? Let's let's take a quick. I want to say it was ninety two, right? No, right? Uh, hold on. Oh, sorry if you just heard the door close. The wind blew it shut. Yeah, I have the windows open because it was uh it's actually a beautiful day out. It's very cool, not too hot. Oh, till two thousand. Oh, he became president. Okay, okay, okay. He became president in ninety three, so he was running in ninety two, and then he was president till two thousand one. So yeah, he was actually president when I was born. Um, right before I was born. I was born in August of ninety three, so a little bit before I was born, but not much. But yeah. Well, yeah, for some reason I thought he was farther back. Ah, oh, George. Yeah, it was H. W. Bush before him, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. I always forget about good old H. W. I always forget about him. Um, but yeah, so I'd probably, I'd probably, I don't know, favorite modern president or modern-ish president, I'd probably say maybe Reagan or good old Clinton there. Eh, probably not Clinton. I mean, I did like watching him or listening to him speak, but no. Definitely not Bush, W or HW, even though I got to give it to W Bush. He seemed like a pretty genuinely decent dude overall. He was just kind of an idiot. Ah, oh, that's a good... You know what? Jimmy Carter. That's who I'll give it to. And I understand he probably wasn't... He wasn't the greatest president, but what he's done now and what he's doing now, especially at his age, I mean, just hats off. Like, that's phenomenal. Anyway, let's finish this before this ends up taking the rest of the day. Nine, Iron Maidens weren't actual torture devices used in medieval times. Basically what happened... Um, no, it was a band. Happened is some archaeologists in the 1800s saw an old metal coffin and some spikes and said, yo, wouldn't it be wildin' if we put these things up in here so that way if someone goes in it, they get poked in their bits? <laughs> you are a sick man, Cornelius. I like it. Into the museum it goes. At least Iron Maiden was real. <laughs> they were as real as it gets. Still are. And don't you forget it. Number 10, Einstein never failed math. He had mastered both integral and differential calculus by the age of 15. 99% chance this one was just made up to make glue eaters feel better about themselves. Well, congratulations, Dimitri. Looks like you failed pre-algebra for the third time. Brady still can't graduate. Well, hey, that means I'm still on par with famous smart science man, so, uh, yeah. Worship me. <laughs> so it just goes to show that we've all got a lot to learn about the world around us. That's why you need to go to Skillshare. Skillshare is... So, yeah. Uh, obviously, if you do want to learn more, use Skillshare. It is pretty cool. Um, but anyway, he uh, he mentioned there about Einstein. Uh, that's Einstein was an interesting man. Like, that's the thing about a lot of, you know, genius-level people throughout the world, throughout history, is a lot of them didn't you know, finish school, or if they did, finish very basic level of schooling. I mean, a lot of very intelligent people struggle with school. They just don't, you know, it's, uh, most of the time it's because they're a little too far ahead, and it's boring, and it doesn't stimulate their mind, and they just lose interest. And other times, just because they, you know, they're not good at dealing, like that structured learning. They need to do things and whatever. But anyway, as I was going to say about one more misconception, a little bonus one for you. Um, Garfield, so the, Garfield the cat, it's a fairly common misconception that he was named after James A. Garfield, the president, which is kind of true and kind of not, interestingly. So the creator of Garfield's dad or grandpa, one of the two, I can't remember, was named after the president. His name was James A. Garfield. But... The creator of Garfield named the cat after his dad or grandpa. So technically, it is kind of like he his that person that he named it after was named after James Garfield, but not completely. I just you know I thought that was an interesting little tidbit, a uh, little bonus fact for you or misconception. But yeah, so that's uh, Samonella Academy and just some other nonsense. He's a uh, he was, I should say, a great YouTuber. I don't know if he maybe moved on to another channel or... I don't know what happened. If anyone knows, like, why he stopped... Hold on a second. All right, so, yeah, if you look here, two years ago, that was the last time, sort by data out of newest, that was the last time. I mean, I, I don't understand what happened. Maybe it's in... The, nope, there's nothing in the about. 
it's such a bizarre. Do you have any other channels? Salmonella Vlog and Rick. Let's look at the vlog. Nope. Also two years ago. Without me and Hanson. Why is that here? I don't know. Um. Yeah, no other channels. I think I'll back. What's Rick? No content. I'm gonna subscribe to it just cause. <laughs> I'll subscribe to uh, the other one too. This one, there. Anyway, um, yeah, but this is Salmonella Academy. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like you'll get any new content. But he still he has a fair amount of videos. Uh, I can't remember how many exactly, like sixty something maybe. Does it say here? No. How do you see how many videos this dude has? Playlist. Okay. That's. I don't know what that is. Alright, I don't know. But anyway, he's a great channel. Check him out. He obviously. Oh, that was like his most popular video I watched. So you've probably seen that one. But if you haven't, if you've never heard of this guy, definitely go check him out. Oh, cool. He, This guy killed Garfield. Yeah, so he likes Garfield. We were talking about them before. It's probably where I got that Garfield the Cat fact from. <laughs> um, that or vlogging through history. Or one of the other history channels I like. But yeah, so thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, all that happy stuff. And until next time.